Smells so fresh, so so soft. Hey. Hello and welcome to another Chinese food adventure. I am in Jinghong. It's a city in the Sichuan Bana Dai Autonomous Prefecture, and tonight. I want to share with you guys possibly the most hectic night market I have ever seen. Check this out. This is Xinguang Ye Shi, the Starlight Night Market. It opens every evening around 6 p.m. and it's fair to say it's popular with the tourists. Man, this place is so, so busy. A lot of people getting their photos taken here. You can say that again. I've been to many places in China where people like to try on the costume of the local ethnic minority and take beautiful pictures, but this market takes the concept to a whole new level. Almost one in three people that I pass are wearing an outfit of some kind. I am very curious to know whether they've bought the entire outfit or whether it's rented. Hey, hello. I want to ask you, is this outfit rented or is it rented? Rented. Oh, it's like a theater room. It's like a theater room. The other main attraction of this night market is of course the food. It wouldn't be a real night market in China if there wasn't some good food involved. And there are so many dishes here that are catching my eye that I've never seen before and that I'm really, really excited to eat. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. But to ensure it doesn't get out of hand, I'm setting myself a budget of 100 renminbi. That's about 15 American dollars. Let's see what we can get. One of the most common stamps I'm seeing here are these, and they're serving something called liang ban. And liang ban basically means cold mixed. And from what I can understand, it's all of these cold things at the front here, including meats and vegetables and noodles. And you basically choose what combination you want. They put it into this mortar and pestle like bowl and then like pound it all together to make sure that all of the sauces like blend in together. So they've got this huge menu of options here. I'm just going to ask what's popular and then just go with that. Hey, ni hao. So she's recommended me this one, number two on the menu, which is basically this here, boneless chicken feet. Love that. So they also have these um, little seats here with like a little eating table here, which is super cute. So it's um, actually an interesting vibe in this really busy night market, just like having a little sit and gonna enjoy my food here. So to make my dish, she takes some of those boneless chicken feet, as well as some rice noodles and other herbs, lemon, chili, and a variety of sauces. It's then mixed up and there we go, that's it. it smells so fresh, like lemony, coriandery, zappy. Oh, I think this is gonna be super, super refreshing and delicious. So obviously first, I'm gonna go in with some of this uh, boneless chicken foot. I mean, isn't that the dream? The deliciousness of chicken foot without the hassle of taking out all the bones. Mmm. Oh, the taste is fantastic. It's so fresh and fragrant. I mean, look at the colors in this. It's so vibrant. It's like a beautiful summer salad almost. You've also got like some noodles in there. You've got some tomato, lots of onion as well. And I really love the texture of this boneless chicken feet. Just watch out, I had one that's a lot of bone in it. Perfect way to start off my food adventure here tonight at this night market, because often in Chinese cuisine, it starts with like the cold dishes. This is a cold dish, it's literally called dian ban. And also it's really set my tongue vibrating. My tongue is literally vibrating from this spice and tanginess and fresh flavors. It's setting, up, setting me up for success here. Was I the only one distracted by the background just now? Not just me? Okay, good. Let's get us a change of scenery and find a new dish to try. We got a budget to burn, baby. Another dish I'm seeing a lot at this market is this grilled puffy looking tofu. It's called ba jiang dofu, and I'm curious to see what it's all about. One portion is 15 renminbi, so that means we've still got 55 renminbi left in our budget. So it's served looking pretty plain. I mean, it's not sprinkled with any spices or salt on the barbecue, but it is served with these two dips. And I'm guessing that's where the whack bang of flavor is gonna be coming from. So this one seems to be like a, a, a chili salt. And this, I'm not really too sure what it is. This is what? Let's try some of that sauce by itself, shall we? Ooh, that's very, very garlicky. My breath is gonna be smelling after this. So the lady next to me, she seems to be like dipping it first in like the, the chili salt and then dipping it in the liquid. I don't know, for me, I'd kind of do it the opposite way. So I think I'm gonna dip it back in that salt, which is really <laughs> covering it with that chili. Hopefully it's not too spicy, let's try. 
Mm. I think the best way to describe it is like a tofu balloon. On the outside, you've got like a slightly chewier kind of skin. And then on the inside, it's just so incredibly soft. Like, look at this. It's just going to burst open with tofu goodness there. So, so soft. These two sauces add like such a flavor to it. Oh, <laughs> a bit too much there. Swipe a bit of that off because it is quite spicy. I think I'm going to need something a bit sweet after this. Ask and you shall receive. A few stalls down, I came across this stall specializing in Thai sticky rice specialties. So we are obviously in China, but we are not far at all from the border of Laos and Myanmar and Thailand isn't too far away. So this down here is actually selling Thai specialties like sticky rice things, among which of course the famous mango sticky rice. But this stand isn't the only one. There's a lot of stands here selling like Lao coffee, a lot of um, Thai desserts as well, among which like that pancake that everyone loves to get when they're in Thailand. So um, I've come here not for mango sticky rice. I love mango sticky rice, but I'm trying something else, which I haven't tried before, which is jackfruit sticky rice. And it looks so cute here. It's like got the jackfruit and then the sticky rice in the middle. A portion costs 30 RMB, so I guess it's a bit on the pricier side, but seeing it being made, okay, I think it's worth it. First, they cut up the jackfruit, then it's stuffed with all different colors of sticky rice. I'm curious to know if each color of sticky rice has its own unique flavor. She then adds some fresh pineapple, fresh mango, sprinkles some shredded and coconut on top, then the whole thing is drizzled with coconut milk. Can we just have a moment for how amazing this dessert looks? It's so intense, like look at the color of that rice. Obviously gonna go in with the pink one first. How do I go about this? One bite or two? Maybe two, or maybe one. I don't know. Oh, go for one. Mm. Mm. Before I tell you just how much I love this, let me get it all down the hatch. This may take a while. Kids, take Arnie Amy's advice, take smaller bites. Actually not too overwhelmingly sweet. The jackfruit isn't that sweet. It just gives a really nice texture to the outside of like that sticky rice. The sticky rice itself, sticky <laughs> as you would guess. Um, and it doesn't seem like the color of that dye, it doesn't give it a flavor. It didn't taste like strawberry or anything like artificial. Um, and it just tastes mostly of coconut because you've got coconut shavings on top. You've got coconut milk that it's been drizzled with. It's really, really good. This time I'm gonna go for original color and I'm gonna put some of this fresh mango on top of it. And I'm gonna go for two bites this time because I think it is just a little bit too much. Even better with a little bit of mango on it. Oh, it's really, really good. So I only have 25 RMB left in my budget. So I thought I would spend it on something Shao Kao related. There are so many stands here for Shao Kao barbecue, but it's very different to any other Shao Kao I've seen before in China. Firstly, the meat and stuff on skewered through with the skewer, there's more like this chopstick clamp to like clamp the things, which is very different. Also, there are so many like fresh and vibrant options, a lot of like herbs involved. Like look at this fish with all of these herbs and uh, lemongrass and ginger. Oh my gosh, it looks really fresh and, and beautiful. Let's see if there's anything here for 25 RMB that I can afford. Oh, this one we can afford, like lemongrass tofu. Oh, cow chiesa. That could be good, barbecued um, eggplant. I kind of know what to expect with a barbecued eggplant. So I'm gonna go for the risk and I'm gonna go with the tofu. I was told I could choose between these two tofu options. So I went for the tofu with the tan, the one on the right there. It's then taken to the back where they barbecue it fresh. The good thing about ordering shao kao is you get the privilege of sitting at one of these tables. So I sat down before, because I got to this market quite early, and I sat down here just to chill a bit, and within five minutes there was someone coming up to me like, no, you can only sit here if you're buying shao kao. So now I've bought some shao kao, 25 RMB worth, but it still gives me the privilege to sit here and enjoy this nice view over the river. As well as this extremely loud karaoke happening here that nobody seems to be very into. Here comes our barbecue lemongrass tofu now. Okay, wow. I thought I knew I was getting, but this is definitely not it. I wish I had been paying closer attention to them cooking it because I'm not sure how it went from the skewered form that we saw earlier to this. I guess it's been barbecued, some stuff has been added. I think some, some sauces have been added and um, yeah, it's been cut up into these little strips, which is great, easy for eating. Let's give it a try, lemongrass tofu, bon appetit. And I've got mixed feelings on this one, guys. I really like the freshness from all those herbs. You've got some chili, obviously lemongrass and stuff. I really like a slight crunchiness on the outside of the tofu, that's great. The only thing is, it's just quite salty. I feel like maybe someone's hand slipped when they were putting in the spices at the end and he's added too much um, salt, unfortunately, because it has all the foundations of being really, really amazing. 
but maybe the moral of this story is if you want to get shalkong here in Sichuan Bana, don't come here. There are so many shalkong places outside. If you're looking for a shalkong place in Sichuan Bana, it's not hard. Just follow the smoke. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's just not not it. But I'm at the end of my budget. But I don't want to end on a bad note. So we're going to extend the budget. We're going to get one more thing. I don't know what, but we're going to get one more thing. Also worth noting is the later it gets at this market, the busier it gets. So if you're not a huge fan of crowds, come right when it opens at 6 p.m. so you can hit it and quit it early. I just saw a woman drinking out of a fruit and I want that. So after a bit of walking around and searching, I found this stall where these fruits that people are drinking out of a straw are selling like hotcakes. I've never seen anything like it. I have no idea what this fruit is. Oh, okay. So I've discovered the name of this fruit in English is kiwano or ginseng fruit or horned melon. It has so many names, none of which I've heard before. So this is the fruit in question. It's quite heavy and those spikes So yeah. If that hit you in the head, it'd do some damage. <laughs> so first step, he puts it in the water, gives it a little wash and then cuts off the top and then in it go, he goes, he just said it's sour and sweet flavor. He's taking out some stuff there and then he goes in, kind of pulping it all up. Wow, I am so intrigued to try this fruit. And then he puts something in it. For me. Oh, okay, he puts some honey in. I didn't, jigana. Hong Tang. Okay, a little bit of brown sugar. And there we go, that's it. Wow, okay. You know, we're over budget, but this is exactly the note I want to end my night on. Taking a risk on a new fruit that you drink out of. What is this gonna taste like? We will soon find out. Let's find a calm place to drink this. It's, man, it's hectic right now. Oh, found myself a quiet street here, away from the crowds, which feels nice. Uh, let's try it. He said it's gonna have a sour but sweet taste. And as the sign says, it will improve your immunity. And I really think these days, if you put increases your immunity in front of any food or drink, it's gonna sell like hotcakes because everyone wants to boost their immune system right now. Three guesses why. Um, anyway, let's try this. Mm, the taste is kind of like a mixture between strawberry, pear, and pineapple. So it's like tart, as slightly sour, but also has a nice sweetness to it, probably due to the fact that he put quite a lot of honey and um, brown sugar in there, but it is very nice. Very refreshing, nice way to end the evening on something new. You know, Meitao Maui this year. Yeah, this has been a great night. Budget has come to 110 from MB. I'm 10 over, but no regrets. Uh, but guys, as always, please hit that like button so that more people can see this video. Leave a comment if you feel so inclined. What's the food that you liked most out of today's video? Will you be coming here yourself? And most importantly, please subscribe. If you've been watching this channel for a while and you're still not subscribed, you know what to do. It's time you press that subscribe button. Anyway, I've still got so many videos I'm planning to film here in Sichuan Bar. Now, the flavors are so fun and exciting and vibrant and fresh. I just can't get enough. So yeah, expect that in the next few videos. And until then, Goodbye from Sichuan Vanna. <laughs>